Okay, we begin to uh, recite the Heart Sutra. It's a um, mantra to help you calm your mind. Sai gate, 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 g
Today is March the 31st, 2023. Welcome for Friday night meditation and Dharma talks. How's everybody doing tonight? Good? Okay, happy TGIF, huh? <laughs> so uh, tonight I'd like to share with you uh, the topics. Uh, it's kind of difficult if you have never studied meditation, if uh, you have never studied about Zen, so the topic is like um, very simple, big mind, small mind. Do you understand the term? Big mind, small mind. Another word like infinity mind, a narrow mind, right? So uh, this topic, if new to you, is kind of confusion. Uh, so when you listen to this topic, you have to let um, the mind to be calm and to see and to recognize. Sometimes don't attach to the term, the language. I try to describe, try to use your, um, what we call, use your unthinking mind to be able to understand, right? So what is uh, big mind? So big mind is and small mind. So before I go to a topic, uh, I want to describe what is big small mind first, right? And then I will uh, go to the big mind. So uh, small mind, uh, uh, as we divide out this um, small mind, we just use for one percent, and the big mind is ninety-nine percent. So most of a person or a human being. They are not enlightenment. They use. They cannot use this 99 percent of their mind. They only use the uh, one percent of their mind, right? Only an airhead, a Buddha, he able to use that 99 percent of his mind, right? So that's why most of us, as a human, we still have struggle, anger, frustration. We use this small mind, right? So don't attach to the small and large. Don't attach the, the word narrow and infinity, right? The small mind and the large mind or big mind is not the same, but it's not different, right? Um, so let me begin to describe what is uh, small mind. Small mind is like a deluded, deluded mind. That's what we call, in Zen, we call thinking mind. Right now you're thinking, right? That's called small mind, right? For example, if you look at an object, right? If you follow the object and you uh, see the object, but you forgot yourself, you forgot the scene, that is called small what? Small mind. Right. So like I'm sit up here, I see you, all of you. If I don't attach to none of you down there, then I have a live with my big mind. Right. If I attach to one person down there, then I have a what? A narrow mind. You see what I'm saying? So when we sit meditation, we can feel we have infinity mind, what we call a large mind. Big mind. So that infinity mind, when your non thinking mind, or what we call a monkey mind, try to distract. So small mind is deluded mind, busy mind, always thinking. It's like a monkey. It's like uh, what we call rational uh, discrimination mind. The thinking mind, that's what we call small mind. 
So most of us, we live in this world, we use this 1% of our mind. You see what I'm saying? When we do something, we have to think, right? I have to plan this, I have to plan that, right? So we use that small mind, right? Um, what right now, if you sit meditation without thinking, without dis- describing judgment, without any perception, then the infinity mind is very, very infinity. It's peaceful, right? It's happiness what we call true happiness, right? You can feel that during your meditation, during your driving, during your working, during whatever you do, you can feel that infinity mind, right? So let me give you an example. Right now the space inside of my body, there's space, right? Everybody agree? Without space inside my, my nose, I cannot breathe, right? Without space inside my tummy, I cannot digest. So we have this, our body contains space, right? And the, that is we consider a small space. But compared to this, the space of this building, which one is larger? The building, right? The building space infinite, is larger than my space inside of my body, right? So that is the distinction between a thinking mind and a non-thinking mind. You see that? But the space inside of me and the space of this being building or what? A oneness is not separate. So the big mind and the small mind is a what? Is oneness, not separate, right? Because we just use that 1%, right? At our thinking mind. So without judgment, without compare contracts, without what we call thinking, angry, frustrated, stress, anxiety, that is what we call consider a small mind, right? Narrow mind. So just like the small mind like a river, right? Everybody see a river? And big mind is like the ocean. So the, the ocean or the river, what do they have? Water. So water one or separate? They are one, right? So you see that? Sometimes we live with a small mind, but we actually we have this infinity mind. So if you're able to live with anxiety, fear, uh, judgment, always selfish, that we consider a narrow mind, right? Small mind. But if we live with love and kindness, compassion, always forgiveness, always peace, always calmness, that's considered a big mind. So when you practice, you can observe every day, every moment, every hour, if you live a big mind or a small mind. You see what I'm saying? 24 hours, you have to observe that. How many hours do I live with the infinity mind? How many hours I live with this narrow mind? Right? So this is a, um, a song say, uh, it's very simple, it's, it's say that if you live if you do with selfish, I mean you will live in a narrow mind. If you live with unselfish, you live in a you are live in a big infinity mind. You can observe and test it out, right? If you always selfish, you always say this is my my my, then you are what? You are narrow. Uh, the term we say uh, usually we say to uh, people who are selfish, we say narrow what? Narrow mind, right? Narrow mind means like selfish. You only worry for yourself, only protect yourself. You don't care other people, right? But a person with infinity mind, they, they see their friend, their family member, and the, uh, the people, not their friend, not their family, are oneness, right? So you see what I'm saying? So. Love is untouchable, it's uncountable right? when you live with this infinity mind, what we call infinity love, right? So it's very important that you have to live each moment of your mind. Either you use your infinity mind or you need live with narrow mind. Have you ever heard the term narrow head? 
narrow head. Yeah, it means somebody live with what? <laughs> For yourself, selfish, right? So sometimes that word is kind of uh, some, uh, it's not nice to other people, right? But that's the truth. Sometimes we live with a narrow head. So that's why we use only one percent of our, our mind. So meditation helps you to use this infinity 99%. That's why the, the Buddha, before he become a Buddha, he is a prince, right? Pundasta. He, sit, he sat under the Bodhi tree for 49 days. He able to accumulate, he able to overcome all his mara. Mara is greed, angry, delusion, stress, all his desire. So he able to live this. After he enlightenment, he able to live with this large infinity mind. That's what he call 99% of our, his mind. You see what I'm saying? So every day you live, do you live small mind or infinity mind? You can test it out, right? Um, this is student um, as a Zen master. Uh, master, how can I practice small mind and big mind? And then he said that you go to the store and buy two jaw and buy two bean. One is black, one is white. And every day you have two jaw, empty jaw, and you have a black. I'm sorry, a black bean represents uh, what we call uh, selfish, angry, frustrated, anxiety. And the black bean, the white bean represents compassion, love, and kindness. So every day you just put it in. If you leave a lot of small mind, you put in that bean. And you leave in that infinity mind, you put in that, that white bean. At the end of the month, you see what jaw is, is small. Right? So at the end of the month, he see, oh, he have a lot of black bean in his jaw, and he live with his narrow what? Narrow mind, narrow head, selfish, uh, what we call anger, frustrate, anxiety, fear, that consider of his mind. So you can switch around. You can use the black bean as infinity mind, or the white bean with selfish mind. You can... Uh, do it as you wish, right? So it's very important that every day we meditate to observe and to watch our mind, to see if we are truly live with our, our a, what we call a non-thinking mind, right? So uh, the Dhammapana say that mind is the forerunner of everything. All the evil come from the narrow mind. And the mind is the forerunner of all the good mind, the good state. All the good mind come from the infinity mind. So, my friend, if you live with infinity mind, that means you do everything without attachment, without anger, without frustration, fear, anxiety. So your merit and your virtue will be infinity, right? If you do live with your Small mind means everything is limited, right? You see that? So when your heart is open, untouchable, then your merit and virtue will infinity. It's like space, right? So um, one of the Zen students asked the Zen master, the Bodhidharma, he, he had a very famous disciple, who's called Hoi Ka. One day he, his mind is very... Um, not stable. He asked the Bodhidharma, how can I overcome this unsmall mind? Right? Usually we say, oh, my mind is angry, my mind is frustrated, my mind is anxiety, my mind is fear, I'm depression, or I, I am stressed out, I'm depression, I'm fear. So you use the word I, depression, I, fear, mean what? You have ego. Attachment. So is it your, the stress is you or, or not? No, the stress is not you, right? That's good. The depression is not you. So don't say, I stress. I mean you are stressed. The small mind is stress, not you, right? You are the infinity mind. So the Bodhidharma say that, bring out your small mind. If you are not at peace, bring it out. I will 
pieces for you. So the, the, the Hui Ka cannot find his small mind. Yeah. The more you try to find your small mind, your narrow mind, you cannot find it because that is the thinking. Wonderful. We live with anxiety, fear, stress. We can see that narrow head or narrow mind. You see what I'm saying? So, my friend, as you all know, very simple topic, right? But every day, you just sit five, ten minutes, every minute, every uh, one or two times a day. Observe your mind, right? To see if you are li- truly live with this infinity mind, or we just live with this narrow mind, right? If you uh, live with this narrow mind, small mind, you have a lot of suffering. Suffer. You have a lot of stress. You will live with anxiety. You will be fear, right? If you live with infinity mind, you have none of all things, right? Because you are beyond, right? Just like the, the space of the building and the space in my body. If I attach the space in my body, it is mine, then I will be suffering because I'm limited, right? If I see the, the space, this building is mine, the space of the space is mine, then my body and my mind is infinity. You see what I'm saying? So most of the Zen master, when they enlightenment, they use this space as their body. This, this regular body, this four element body, just like a bubble in their mind. Their mind is like infinity. So they always live this infinity mind. So they don't have, and they always have a peace, calmness. You see what I'm saying? So that is very, uh, for us, essential to realize. So where is this infinity mind come from? Anybody know? <laughs> yeah. For, it's um, the infinity mind, what we call the 90, 90% is, is in this house, in this, this body. But we have a sick window. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and, and mind. So when you see stuff, you, you, you see with your narrow mind, then your seeing will be limited. If you see the, the flower with infinity mind, your, your, your seeing what? Infinity. You see what I'm saying? Just like one day the Zen student and the Zen master, they went to the mountain to watch the, usually the season of duck flying, a lot of duck flying, right? Just like we have the pond here, a lot of Canadian di- uh, duck, uh, geese, goose, right? Geese fly by. So one day the student, the master went to the mountain to see flying duck. And then the master asked the student, what is that? And then he said, oh, it's flying duck. And then when the fly duck go away, the master asked, where is the, f- where is the flying duck? And the student say, oh, it's gone. And the uh, master pin his nose, very hurt, and say, I thought you say it's, it's fly away. Why are you here? You see what I'm saying? When you see an object, you just follow an object. I mean, your scene is gone. Actually, your scene always, always there, right? The object is come and go, but your scene nature is always there. Just like the hearing, the tasting. Your taste, your hear, your seeing is always here in this moment. It's come out of this five window, right? Just like uh, when we eat something, we feel like good, bad, hot, cold, uh, what else? Bitter, sweet, sour. We always what? Chasing that taste. And then we attach to that taste. The flavor. The more you attach to the flavor, the more you what? The more you suffer. Right? Because you want that. You cannot, if you don't get, next time you don't have that, you will be get mad, get grouchy, get upset. You see what I'm saying? So it is very important that we able to allow our infinity mind to taste the bitter, the sweet, the sour, the salt. You can able to feel that bitter, but don't attach to it. 
You see what I'm saying? Just like when you see, you hearing. Other people say something good to you, you know it, you are aware of it, but don't attach to it. If you attach to it, if somebody says some bad thing to you, then you are you will be upset. You cannot sleep one or two days. You get grouchy. You get uh, stressed out. You see what I'm saying? So do my friend do not attach to sound, smell, taste, touch, seeing. It's always there, right? We just observe and we able to recognize and to able to transform the negative, what we call karma, into a positive karma, right? Good karma, bad karma into good karma. So, as you know, the topic is very essential for us to practice meditation. Is for us to able to use every day as part of our life. Every day you use either infinity mind or a narrow mind, right? Uh, so go back to the the topic. Infinity, either infinity mind, no small mind, or what? Or oneness, right? They are not separate. Just like the space inside of my body and the space outside of this building are, are one, are not separate, separate, right? So every day we have to li- learn to live with that and to transform, right? And to able to overcome that. So it's very uh, essential for us to realize how to practice how to understand the method and able to uh, follow the method that we use and apply for our daily life. So we're able to be less stress, less anxiety, less fear, whatever you have right now, right? Live with that infinity mind. Don't let this monkey mind fool you. The more you practice, it seems like the monkey mind tends to be sensitive. It tends to fool you a lot. So that's why we have to uh, wash carefully during our practice and to see our infinity mind or our narrow mind. Okay. Anybody have any question? Very simple, right? Can you apply with your daily life? If you live an infinity mind, you always be happy. You always joy, right? You always have some peace, calmness. If you live with a narrow head, a way we call narrow mind, you have a lot of struggle in your daily life. A lot of sadness, a lot of loneliness, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, right? So this topic helps you to engulf, able to open your mind like space. Let your mind like space don't let your mind like a bell, a gun, or whatever. That's too small. Let it expand by itself. Let our wisdom, our infinity, expand like space, right? That's why we have a topic we call go deep space. There's a, what do you call? Deep space, right? Everybody see that movie? Star Trek, right? Go deep space. <laughs> it means your mind has to go deep, deeper to space. We tend to live with a floating mind, the, the top of the mind, but we don't go deep bottom of our non-thinking infinity mind. Right, right now you itchy, you in pain, you stress out, you live with this narrow mind. If you live with awareness, a lot to awaken, always live with that infinity mind. Okay, I hope you are able to uh, understand this topic and apply your daily life. Uh, so it will be very helpful for you and your family. Thank you very much. Anybody have any question, comment? Joanna, any question? No. Okay. Oh, you have a question down there? Yes. Okay, what's your question? What did he say? Oh, what is Nevada? What is this? Can you see this? Okay, that's Nevada right there. When you see without thinking, without compare contract, that's Nevada. Nevada is just like the topic infinity mind. 
Nevada is always this peace and calm in the moment, right? So if you live in this moment, awareness yourself, awareness your infinity mind, that's the Nevada, right? Nevada is the person, the joy of this moment. It's nowhere else. Not wait until you die, but not wait until you go to heaven, not wait until you achieve some kind of alignment to uh, achieve Nirvana. So uh, Nirvana is a state of calmness, peace, infinity mind. The mind is like the, the, the one I talked uh, earlier, infinity mind. That is Nirvana. Okay, you, do you understand? Okay, that's good. Oh, you live Nirvana every day? Oh, just a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. Oh, that's good. A couple of minutes. <laughs> How long have you live with Nirvana? So the state of Nirvana is part of you already. It's like part of space. It's always here. All we need to recognize. Okay, that's a good topic for the, the what, seven-year-old uh, boy. Anybody else have any question, comment? Everybody okay, right? Everybody free your mind, right? Okay. Uh, we will recite the ending vows and uh, we will try to let you go. Living being or innumerable, I vow to save them all. A flexion or endless, I vow to write them all. The Dharma dawn countable, I vow to study them all. The Buddha voice and self, I vow to attain it. I vow the merit and virtue from this will go everywhere and reach everyone. So the all of us and all living beings realize the Buddha way. Thank you and enjoy your wonderful weeks and stay safely and happy TGIF. Can you turn the light outside, Joanna? So people can... Yeah, go ahead, go feed the fish. Thank you. Go feed the cat and the dog too.